place where we discuss biodynamic practices worldwide for you, your farm and the planet. So welcome to the Living Farms podcast. Today we have Jean-Michel Florent with us. Um, he's the co-leader of the section for agriculture. So a good colleague of mine. <laughs> and we are going to discuss um, about biodynamic quality and food quality in particular. Um, this is, I think, a very important topic and I'm uh, very eager to discuss this with Jean-Michel uh, because in the biodynamic movement, we realize that the consumers, for example, are often fascinated by the biodynamic quality and that the demand is increasing constantly over the years. And Jean-Michel, like, why do you think that the consumers really value the biodynamic quality or how could, do they taste that it's a different product than other food products? Yeah, what I, <clears throat> what I realized uh, by, by speaking with uh, different consumers, different people, that they, it's interesting because it's not only uh, the level of quality you can experience and that had that the food has more sugar or more flavor. It's one aspect, more flavor maybe, more. But there is one uh, other aspect is uh, something like uh, the people are saying it's uh, authentic. It's like a specificity, a specific quality so that uh, the consumers say, we have the impression we can really encounter uh, more than the product through the product we can encounter a place we can encounter uh, people the people who did we who, who made who, who made the food uh, so it's an interesting there are different levels so to say not only flavor uh, good for me sometimes the flavor is a little bit strong even but very interesting and challenging and there is really something Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I, I, uh, yeah. I meet some something interesting. Yeah. And from from your experience, is this something that um, people are easily recognizing when they taste, for example, the first time the biodynamic food, or is it something which needs to be trained to recognize? Or it's. I think it's very different. Uh, we have the in, in viticulture with the wine the people are used to to train themselves to taste wine and then they can really uh, feel this the difference for carrots and so on sometimes it it has really to be trained and sometimes even for some products the consumers say it's a little bit too strong so I want to say it's not always so easy because we are used some uh, used some time to have very uh, yeah something with which is very easy to eat so you don't have an encounter you have only something yeah it's <laughs> very easy to to eat and to but difficult to digest if you look really so it's an interesting thing yeah? uh, or you have the impression you had a, a meal but you are empty you didn't uh, get something and with the biodynamic food is mostly in the opposite there is a challenge there is an encounter and then you get forces out of this but it's really something is happening already yeah it's not the group <laughs> and uh, you, you you take it uh, in yourself and it disappears and nothing happens or it's only heavy in the stomach eh? so these these different aspects are very important how do you do you feel after uh, eating also but it has to be trained for a lot of people to be um, aware of their situation before eating and after eating how do i feel do I feel stronger after eating or do I feel weak and uh, I need some more sugar or whatever or sweets and so because I didn't get enough. Yeah. And I assume it's it's really difficult for some of the people to, to recognize this um, as part of the food that you take 
in in because often like at least what I recognize around me is that people don't associate their level of energy with the food they ate, but it's something like um, something that, that they say, okay, I didn't have enough sleep or something like this. But with the food, it's it's a kind of disconnection um, between the people and and the thought of, of what they ate. So is this something that you can also recognize maybe in France? Because France is such a country with, <laughs> with a good tradition in, uh, in good quality food. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you are right. Huh? It's uh, different from uh, one country, country to the other. In France or maybe also in Italy, the people are used to, to be aware, to, to, they look for good food. They like uh, markets and they really uh, buy also more, um, yeah, more products direct from the farmers and they cook more maybe than in other countries where the, the, the people are buying ready things. And it makes a difference for sure. The, the connection with the food you can uh, have, it's really if you have, if you cook your food yourself, even if it's not every day, but from time to time, you have an, uh, another connection with the food, eh? with the vegetables or with the cheese or even with the meat. Eh? So you, you know where does it come from, you see it. It's different if you, re, uh, if you only buy ready things uh, to eat. So and it's a little bit more in some countries that people like really to transform, to cook uh, themselves more than in other countries where the people are more uh, buying ready, ready food. And also if we look, for example, in France, uh, the, uh, the people are, um, food is a big part of the budget, a, a bigger part than in Germany, for example, or, or in Great Britain. It's more important, so to say, uh, it's a cultural thing. But I think uh, it's possible for everybody to, to be aware of this and, and to try sometimes to buy uh, yeah, directly from the farm on the market and to make these steps, really, to see, okay, the food is coming from the farm and I can transform it, I can cook it, cook it and then eat and even be aware how do I feel after afterwards, after digesting and so on, to make all these aspects and not to reduce food at only one moment. Okay, I, I bought something, I take it from the fridge and uh, yeah, I cook it quick and, and then it's ready and I'm, f I'm full and I have energy or not, but uh, yeah, so ready to, to, to to take time to to see all these aspects of of the food yeah. it's so it's so interesting for me because i basically come from a family where like the food itself was not so important so like since i work for the gutianum i realized that a lot of the people working there have this tradition in their families that cooking and eating already organic and biodynamic and for me it was the different way around so basically my mother didn't have the money to to buy organic food and really needed to look for for cheap meals so to say and so for me it was a long process to come into this understanding of how valuable food is and um and how the, it can taste and i think it's it's such a challenge for for people if you haven't been like haven't grown up in families that that already are aware of of good food and healthy food um because also when you look at those like cheap food um available and this packaged food that you said it's often the same varieties so you don't have a lot of like different tastes um when you eat this this like packed food and um, I remember we had a very nice situation, um, even in the section where we had um, a meal together um, at Anfora, which is a local restaurant. And um, they they cook the biodynamic food produced in the Goetheanum garden. 
And they have all of these older varieties where also the, the salads are a little bit bitter. And it was so interesting to see within our team that some of us um, really said, oh, it's too bitter. And as you said, a challenging, had a challenging encounter with the food. And for me, I, I really enjoy the bitter food now because I also collect then the wild herbs and my taste got used to it. And but as you said, it's, it's for sometimes it can be the same food and it can lead to very different reactions of the body. And if you feel strong afterwards or if it was maybe too bitter for you. So I think the food quality also have this very personal dimension that each of us is like, yeah, that each of us needs a specific personal food that reacts good in the body. Yeah, I, I think you are at the right point huh? that really, at least for adults, uh, everybody should find his own way, his own food. You cannot say it's good for you. <laughs> you can say it's good for me. And I try to really to to taste and uh, to be aware how I am um, after eating and so on. To come back to this question of bitterness, it's very interesting, as you said, that a lot of all varieties were stronger in the taste, like also um, biodynamic food. Because for biodynamic food, if we make the comparison with the conventional food and so on, actually we uh, don't, the, the plants, for example, the carrots and so on, they have more confrontation with the environment. They are not so protected. We try to make more in open fields and so on. Uh, and we don't give such um, fertilization. Uh, so the plants are ready to find their own uh, uh, minerals in the soil and to be really active, so to say. And this, develop, uh, this develops also a lot of secondary compounds in the in the in the vegetables in the plants so they are more bitter they have more flavor they have more tannins they have more uh yeah pigments colors but all these uh compounds all these uh, are very important for the health so if you eat a food which is a little bit bitter now it's since a very not so uh, long time we know that bitter uh, a lot of organs can uh, uh, taste the bitter even if we are not conscious of this so the lungs for example our stomach they have uh, bitterness receptors and these bitterness bitter uh, substances can really uh, avoid infections so it's really very important bitter food not too bitter but a little bit of bitterness in the food is really important for example in salad in chicory and so on really important for the health so we we can really say if we have such foods with with much secondary compounds yeah we 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 eat health so to say and we don't need so many uh, remedies afterwards and we, it's, uh, there, are, there is a lot of research now about this, very interesting. So in this sense, this food is maybe uh, more expensive, but at the end less expensive. But I know, it's, uh, yeah, you have to pay it when you, when you buy it, for sure. But at the end, you will, have, uh, you will use less remedies and less... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, vitamin and vitamins and so on. You have to to buy if you don't have these substances in the food. So it's really a question. Yeah. And then of course it's also the the ethical question. I mean, it it depends also on the region that you look at. Um, like, of course, in in some of the regions, a higher price for biodynamic food is not possible. But maybe also in those regions, it's um it's easier to produce biodynamic food um, than, than conventional with the agrochemicals. Um, and here, I think in Europe or in the higher income countries, so to say, um, I think then it's a question of ethics. If it's, uh, if it's worth to, 
to um to pay a high price for those things that actually give you the energy to run and your system and um i mean here in europe the people pay so much so many euros or uh, or swiss francs for their cars for example <laughs> and for the fuel um, to run their cars but for the own fuel the the price is um then often considered too high so i think that's a it's a question of um yeah of ethics and and preferences and so um you just i mean we we just focus now on this health aspect and on this question of why it's good for for yourself to invest into high quality but what would you say from a bigger picture why is the is it important to have a good quality food and biodynamic quality maybe in particular it's important for as we said for the taste and for the for our health But the danger could be also that we are a little bit egoistic. Eh? We think only at ourselves, our our health, and it it can be really a danger with the with the food eh? that we think we want always to have better taste, better food for us, for our health. So, at the end, I think uh, as you as you said before, eh, this uh, ethical aspect is very important, and I think it's not actually not so difficult but for sure i think uh, children should learn this at school no? because now they are so far from the food for the from the origin of the food no? they really should learn this at school but i said it's not so difficult because if you try really to realize where does my food come from And if you try to say, okay, I really want to know more or less where does my, my food come from. Uh, maybe you cannot do it for everything, but for some things. Then you will choose more. You will really try to buy more on the market or in a CSA or in a short, um, in a small shop. Or you, you will try to have the possibility to avoid to have too many steps between the producer and uh, yourself so that you can have one contact more or less to know where does my food come from and if you have this question where does my food come from you can have behind the question how do the people uh, live who are producing this food and i have to say it's for me always a joy uh, in my um, at home i buy a lot uh, on the market And I know, so my cheese is coming from uh, the farm Pensée Sauvage and my bread is coming from Tulipin and my vegetables are coming from the farm Peter. And I know the people and I know the landscape and I, I, I can connect with them. Uh, I don't know it's possible for everybody, for every food. But try a little bit to do this. It could be really interesting also for a family with the children to say, okay, we want to look where does uh, our cheese come from. Yeah, and we go one, we want to visit the farm. Well, wonderful uh, goats or cows and so. So it's then, then it's not food reduced as a thing. Food is part of a of life and its uh, possibility to connect with the landscape, with animals, with people. And I have pictures from, from people. So coming to buy on the farm, on the farm in Normandy, for example. Yeah, it's really a very important uh, happening. Yeah? The children are coming and they can see the, the, the cows and the pigs. And then they go with the mother or with the father to buy the, in the shop. But they can really make the connections. And for them, it's every week, it's a very important moment of the day. And so, I mean, you, you pay uh, 10 euros to go in the zoo, but there it's for free. <laughs> so you can pay a little bit more for the food. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, only to, as an example. Yeah, but for me, it would be really something like that. And there are more and more possibilities to make this. Or you, you pay also to go to the uh, yeah, to the movies or whatever, but you have real movies if you go on the farm to, to go uh, to have a walk and to see where does it come from. 
so we have really to to yeah to to go in this um what do you say yeah we need to 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 go really at the source uh, at the beginning of the process of the food and make the steps follow the steps and then it's a joy it's really a joy because then i think the same piece of uh, bread uh, will be twice so good and so important for you because it has also a very um how do you say soul quality yeah you have pictures you have people you have connections with this and uh once a, a woman, I, I explained this and a woman told, told me, yeah, now I'm buying all my food, my vegetables and fruits from a CSA. And it's really interesting because I eat less actually because it's so full. And I have uh, this picture of the farm every time. Um, and then I don't need so much. It's not that I need more because it's more, there is more quality. There is another quality, uh, it's this connection quality which is also very important and not egoistic. It's the opposite. Yeah, it's really okay. I, I want really to support these people who are making my food. Yeah, I can I can totally agree with that. I mean, I of, of course, I also have a organic box from from local farms <laughs> here nearby and and the food is so much richer and then you don't need so much of like in, in quantitative terms because you're already then so satisfied so to say with the with a small amount and then I'm still struggling sometimes with um with the reality of traveling or um time pressure as well then sometimes it's my own unpreparedness <laughs> that that I haven't taken uh, the carrots for example with me when I'm when I'm going somewhere else and so on and and that's sometimes so, um, yeah, not so so easy to organize to stay connected with the food in a world where where the food is available all the time and where you can have this easy access. Um, but I really like the idea that um, via the food that you get connected with your landscape and surrounding. And I think that's something which is um, for me also very anthroposophical to to be like that via the food you get connected with your with your landscape and i think it's a it's a good thought so to say I, as you said it's not always possible and i think it's more important for children i think it's very important for tri children to have this possibility to connect with the with the farm with the place <laughs> the food is coming from and then as adults, for sure, we have a lot of different situations and we have, uh, yeah, we have to make the best we can. We have to make compromises. I'm not dogmatic, you know? but it's exactly the reason why I said it's very important for children. And if they can, for bread or for milk, for one, one food at least, know this, where does it come from? Huh? I think it's very important. But if you if you look uh, it's I, I was some sometime uh, surprised in paris so in front of um, centre beaubourg so the culture cultural centrum being one so uh, in a small uh, a small restaurant and then i listened to my neighbors and they were speaking about their vintners biodynamic vintners and the one was was explaining to the two colleagues yeah, I visited him and I, I buy a, a wine from uh, him in Burgundy and now it con he converted to biodynamics. It's more work, but it's so interesting and I like the wine and so on. So it was really a little bit strange. Huh? So in Paris, in the middle of Paris, the people were connected with the, with the, uh, well, with the place in Burgundy with vintners and they spoke about this by, by drinking a uh, wine, by sharing a wine. And for them, sharing this wine, drinking the wine together was the possibility to connect with some people, with the farmers, uh, with the place in Burgundy and uh, to say, OK, I, I, I visit uh, these vintners once a year. I buy my wine, this. 
So it was like to bring the landscape and to bring uh, the countryside in the town. And if you see, uh, I know in France at least, I think in more countries, how many small, um, it's not coffee shop, I don't know the name, small uh, restaurants, you can eat a little bit and drink a wine. Eh? Uh, and there are more and more. And they are very often, they have uh, organic and biodynamic wines because the people want to have an encounter. They want to have something uh, authentic. And they were the whole day uh, yeah, in front of screens. And so in a very virtual world, and they are seeking at the end of the day, something authentic. And they go outside uh, as soon as uh, the weather is <laughs> hot enough and they eat a salad and drink a good wine. A lot of, uh, of people in Paris. I was impressed in the last 10 years, more and more, uh, maybe a hundred of small shops like that. And it's not complicated. It's not very expensive. It's more to, to have this authentic feeling and to share with friends on a very um, easy level, so to say, but to breathe, actually to breathe because we don't breathe in our civilization, in our rooms, in front of screens. We need to breathe. We need to connect with the world. And it's one way. I, I, I take this example of wine because in France, it's a strong um, mediator for also for biodynamics, but it could be bread for sure. And it's wine is always with bread and with cheese and, and, and for sure. It would be also fruits or um, yeah, ice cream or whatever, huh? but to have this quality yeah, to, yeah. And it's so it's so interesting that you say that in particular for children it's important to to encounter this this feeling or this realization of how the food is produced and I, because I think as adults we are often like very in our brains and then the food can really support something to come out of that a little bit but for the children um, in the Living Farms project we visited the Ambagati school. Um, mm -hmm. So for those listeners, I will put it in the show notes um, where you can watch a small video and they really connect like biodynamic gardening education um, with the healing effects of food. So they really try to integrate the, the children um, from a young age into small farming activities. So they, for example, then they can plant their own beans and, um, and they can harvest something. So it's, it's not at all child, la child labor, but very like <laughs> low level um, farming expertise, um, exercises. And, and then you, then the children eat their own food and you really see that, um, so to say the individuality of the children then really is created with the energy out of the food and it's a it's such a nice harmony um that when you when you know where your food is produced and maybe even have the chance to produce it yourself that your own character can really unfold or i think it's mm -hmm. it's one of mm -hmm. the aspects that helps to mm -hmm. unfold mm -hmm. also the own quality of yourself <laughs> so to say I, I i think maybe the i don't want to say biodynamic food is always better than uh, organic or whatever it depends really how the farmers are working but what i can say is that really uh the biodynamic methods method gives uh, us the possibility to enhance the specificity of the food because we we want for sure to have a healthy soil to have a lot of vitality in the food we want to have this aspect of uh, yeah, ripening differentiation all these second, secondary compounds all these pigments flavors and so on and we have really the possibility to enhance this with our uh, spray preparations but we also have the possibility if we use the biodynamic uh, methods and specifically the preparations to develop, to enhance also the connection from the plant with the soil to go deeper, to have more terroir quality, more specific quality from the place. 
and it's something like one more time the the people who are tasting wine are really uh, saying yeah there is more terroir quality and also also so to connect stronger with the soil with the place but also to connect stronger with the cos uh, cosmos with the light quality with the warmth that means what does light um uh, what does light uh, light make for plants it helps the plants to be more specific to develop more their uh, specific uh, aspect of the species of the variety and we can really uh, yeah we can really taste it so to say yeah? a carrot is more a carrot if you use uh, if we use uh, the biodyn biodynamic preparations in a good sense so we help the different uh, plants and animals to, to be more individualized to express more their own nature so to say and it's really the way we want to work in biodynamics we want to help or to support all beings plants and animals to develop more their own quality not to be all the same not to be all boring and only yeah only substance no the opposite and sometimes it can be a little bit challenging for the eater huh? because it's yeah it has it has really um, character so to say and it's like meeting somebody with character it's very interesting but some, sometimes it's challenging but if we were all the same and all uh, nobody has character so it's totally boring nothing happens no encounter huh? to have an encounter to to develop we need uh, this uh, character we need this confrontation huh? this little bit challenge not too strong but as you said and these challenges are bitterness are maybe not so 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 easy to to eat eh? you are ready to to work a little bit uh and so on eh? in, in in flavor and but at the same time we can really feel that something is happening already yeah and can you, and, uh, can you explain a little bit for for those people that are, are not so good in french <laughs> and, and maybe don't know the term um yet so so well what the terroir means because um i think it's a very important term also for the biodynamic um farming and uh for me i directly associ associate it with the farm organism aspect mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it um would be would be nice to have your um perspective on what the terroir means and how it can maybe be developed or created or enhanced so to say Yeah, terroir is uh, actually the. Um, with terroir, we mean all the specific quality of a place, but more, more the qualities coming from the soil, eh? from the rock and from the soil, and every soil is a little bit different. It can be limestone or granite or whatever, and then you have out of these uh, rocks you have different minerals and then you have a different humus uh, quality uh, and uh, terroir is also for sure uh, connected with the uh, with the sun yeah if it's a south uh, place with a lot of sun or more north place and so so there is really this we can really realize if we go for a walk in nature every place is different and terroir means this specific quality from the place and some people who are really good in tasting wines they can really say okay this wine is coming from this place yeah this uh, specific place uh, because uh, i can i can taste in the wine for example the limestone quality it's more uh, yeah horizontal for example or if you have a granite or this quality of such a stone you have more something vertical it's very interesting pictures the people can bring and express also even connected to what we are using in biodynamics it's interesting you can you can taste it these qualities yeah And for me, as as far as I understood, um, the preparations are in a way then helping to 
um, bring out this terroir as well in the in the final quality of the plant, so to say. Yeah, for sure. We have the two spray preparations and the whole manure specifically yeah, is really helps actually the, the plant to have very deep roots and uh, that the roots are going really deep and far away in the soil yeah, really uh, and connect very, very um, yeah, on a very intense way with the soil. And then you can understand if you have three or four more roots than with the chemical fertilizers, then for sure you have four, four, three or four more possibilities to take specific minerals from the soil and to have a bigger diversity. And then you can even feel it in the taste or in the, yeah, in the taste. But it's really, yeah, for sure with the, home manure preparation we can really have more terroir quality we yeah there are even some some people i just remember that um it's a little bit off the topic but i still found it interesting as a thought that um some some researcher i once uh heard in an interview she she mentioned that um also the the soils and the terroir so to say shapes the um the char characters of the people so that um, you may have different people on very sandy soils than you have people on loamy soils, for, for example. I found that just very interesting as I changed from a very sandy soil mm -hmm. region mm -hmm. to a now very loamy <laughs> region. And I can, I, I can relate in a way. So that's, um, that was it, interesting. It's interesting because in the past it was very strong. Eh? We were born on a place and a lot of people stood in this place uh, their life all their life and now we have we are in a new situation and i think it's important also connected to the food that a lot of people are traveling changing their place and looking for the place where they want to be if possible a lot of people don't have the choice it's a pity uh, but as a modern human beings we want to find our own place and uh, we don't uh, necessarily stay at the place we were born or where our family was and i think it's a very it's a modern aspect it's not bad or good it's like that and it's important to take this and try to say and then the step is now i want to connect with the place i i, I made the choice to to live on a place for a certain time could be yeah it could be longer or not so long but the question is how can i connect with this place because i'm not born there so i'm not connected but i have the chance to connect and the food is a wonderful way that would uh, that would say it's so important to buy local food not only to support the region but also to connect with the region for sure it's also good to have some coffee some paper from far away the other other aspect i think we are all we are we are all citizens of the world so we can take for the food a little bit of the flavors from the flavors of the world uh, small some chocolate some uh, spices and some yeah so so to to have really the flavor flavors of the world but the most important part of our food should give us the possibility to connect with the place we are living. And it's really um, a way to connect actively. We have to eat, so to say, so we have this chance to connect actively with our place. So we could try really to, yeah, to buy a big part of our food from the region, not only, not only for an, an ecological aspect, less transport, it's a very good aspect, but it's one aspect. The other aspect is the aspect of the connection with my soul, because I, I, I can f feel um, responsible for my region, because I can, if I know my region, if I know the farmers, so I can feel responsible. And if something is happening to a farm, I know. So maybe I will help uh, by supporting, or uh, I don't know what. Huh? If something is happening to a farmer at the other uh, end of the world, I won't know. 
I won't know everything about this situation. Or only in very specific way if you have a fair trade, uh, fair trade network. But otherwise, no possibility to connect, no possibility to be responsible. So this responsibility aspect is for me very, very important. How can I feel responsible for the people who are producing my food for every day? So it's so important and I can do it better if it's in the, in the region, in my region. And this connection is even like visible in the microbial um, composition of the, of the stomach and the, and the gut. So that's, that's even something which can be tested in a way. And I was just, I mean, that may be a very provocative question, but, um, but I was just wondering if it's maybe then a laziness of people to not come into this empathy with the region and to not come into this connection um, when they consume this, let's say, more globalized packaged food? Or, or is it, I mean... I, I'm I'm just thinking here while while on the go, but um, but we are more and more. On the one hand, we want to connect with one one another, but on the other hand, we are realizing that we do everything to be individuals and to separate one another from the nature, so to say. And if food is such a big component of being able to connect with your landscape and with your um, nearby fellow, so to say, then then it might be a syndrome as well that the people are too lazy to 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 connect with the with the surrounding anymore. Yeah, I I I think there was a time that it was old fashioned to buy, and and it was I think it's also an important aspect to realize this. Huh? It was old fashioned to, to buy things from the region. It was very modern to buy uh, exotic uh, fruits and uh, something from far away, very modern, very fashionable and so on. And now there is a, a, a way back, so to say, but in a conscious way to say, okay, I want to, to buy a local food. But for some people, I think it's uh, nowadays it's... Uh, Yeah, it's old fashioned. And the question is really how to make it modern, how to, to, to show that it's, uh, you can enjoy it. It can be really, um, yeah, I think it's not enough to say you have to buy local food because of transport question. You have to enjoy it. You have to discover it. You have to, to find ways that uh, you make it very interesting. Yeah, to be, to be, Uh, to find new aspects or and I think yeah we, we should all be creative in this way because the old-fashioned uh, things it's for a lot of people the reason why they want to buy uh, in the supermarket uh, new things and I mean the consumers <laughs> society uh, is uh, very strong there with the uh, publicity and so on but we have really to look at this aspect um, yeah, how to make it really, uh, yeah, really modern and to say it's, but you can enjoy it. It's really interesting. And, and it's the reason why I think we have a lot to do with, uh, with the children, huh? because afterwards, uh, when you have your uh, food habits as adults, it's very difficult to transform. You, we know huh? all, <laughs> so the children can, yeah. Uh, if the children can really have uh, experience a diversity, a big diversity and of food step by step, not the little children, the little children don't need so much diversity, but step by step until they uh, become uh, adults, uh, that they really can uh, experience a diversity of food, but really food, authentic food, not packaged food, Food, they can really uh, make different experiences, bitter, sweet, uh, salty, and, and, and a lot of uh, qualities and flavors, then I think uh, as adults, they will, they will more um, connect with their region and, and they will enjoy to buy in the region and more and more. But it's also a question really of education, I think, for sure. Yeah. yeah. 
And as a farmer, what what would you say, like um, coming back to the question of the food quality, what are what are important aspects that can support to increase the food quality? For the farmers, do you mm -hmm. mean? Yeah. So I I, I think uh, in uh, biodynamic farming we have the first really the first uh, step is really to have a healthy soil, um, which is really important uh, with, with enough uh, organic matter with enough with really uh, very healthy soil. Uh, we need a good growth you there is always this opposition of quantity and quality but i think we need both we need to find the right balance so at the beginning if we are looking at uh, the growth of uh, cereals for example huh, so wheat then at the beginning they really need to build a lot of quantity a lot of leaves and uh, yeah there is a lot of photosynthesis a lot of uh, creation of new substances and then if there is enough quantity uh, then the plant can transform these substances in high quality um, substances and for this second aspect first aspect is really a health, healthy soil huh? we, we, we try to make it with the compost with our uh, medicinal herbs preparations and so on and then we have uh, really to the farmers have really always to try to to help the plants to be to stay as healthy as possible that means to avoid too strong um uh, yeah when the weather is too cold or too warm and so on really to help that there is a healthy environment with the with the weather so to say and for this we use also in biodynamics it's interesting we can use uh, her herbal teas or teas from different medicinal herbs uh, for example nettle is very well known can help the growth uh, 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 balanced growth of the plant so really try to have to to help the plants so that they are strong enough and they stay healthy because um, yeah, because we don't have pesticides. So if we have diseases, it's difficult. So we have really to support the health of the plants. And then we have the spray preparations. And we, sp uh, we spoke about before, also to enhance this um, uh, health of the plants. And it's important to realize, what do you think if you eat healthy plants, how does it... <laughs> What, yeah, how does it work on yourself? Healthy plants, so they are strong, they are healthy, they are more difficult to try to digest, so to say. But in the confrontation, you develop your own forces. Yeah, you develop your own uh, strength. Actually, actually, we have to say biodynamic food is a little bit more difficult to digest because stronger, more character, healthier. And we have to destroy it by digesting. But out of these forces, by the digestion, we get own forces. And that we can realize it. If you have something which is no flavor, no vitality, you don't get vitality of it. But if you have a strong um, food, then you have really this confrontation and you can develop your forces. It's uh, similar if you want to have muscle, you have to train not to stay in the bed. Huh? So, so the same for us too much, so to say. And for this, I think all the things uh, the farmer has to do is really to develop healthy and strong pl plants. And if we look at all the pesticides which are used in conventional farming, Actually, that means that these plants, these crops are ill. Otherwise, we won't need so much pesticides. It's obvious. I mean, all pesticides are against weeds, against insects, against uh, cryptochemic uh, diseases, or you know, so on. So we have really to, to see the reality. Um, for sure, I cannot say in biodynamics we we have always totally healthy plants and so not 
but we have healthier plants, much healthier, and we try, the most important, we try to have always healthier and healthier plants, as healthy as possible, in this way. Yeah? That's so that's so ironic, or I mean, in those new varieties, then, for example, the bitter components are uh, uh, um, taken away by breeding, and then you need more agrochemicals because you kind of diminish the plant its own natural power to to be resistant exactly. against yeah. Yeah, pests exactly. and diseases. Yeah, I mean, it's um, yeah, it's sometimes ironic, but I I would totally agree that that food. I think it's. It's quite an old saying that food is medicine, but um, mm -hmm. we yep. kind of lost a little bit the connection to this um, to this old statement. Um, yeah, I think we could probably discuss hours about this topic of biodynamic quality because it's such an important topic for the um, for our movement. Um, but I uh, would like to close it a little bit here now for those listeners that. Um, are also much more interested in the to to in the topic. Um, you held a very interesting um, presentation at the Goetheanum TV about biodynamic quality, if it's real or not. I will um, link that into the show note. It has English subtitles, so it can be um, can be followed. And um, yeah, we just had recently also our agriculture conference in 2022 about the topic of um, quality through biodynamics. And the idea was to show if it can be perceived, experienced and developed. So we have a broad variety of different speakers on that topic and the videos will also be released um, on our website and at the Gutianum TV, so you can just check that out. Um, but before closing, I would like to ask you, Jean-Michel, one last question, which, I'm, will I, which I will ask every podcast guest. Um, and that is about the question, like, what are your personal three main reasons why you are engaged in the biodynamic movement and why you stay active in that movement for our future of the planet Earth? So to say, <laughs> I, I I come from my uh, study first from uh, the aspect of the protection of nature, and I realized uh, only to protect nature doesn't uh, it doesn't it's not enough today. It doesn't work, and it's also a strange uh, view. It's a view that there is nature and there are human beings separated. There is a duality. So one uh, very important reason for me to, to, to stay engaged, engaged in the biodynamic movement is that I really realized, realized that we have a way to work with nature or with the living beings, so to say, with the living beings to work with life uh, on a creative way. So we can really be... Um, get from uh, the plants and the animals a lot of yeah a lot of food on a different level but a lot of joy and so on uh, a lot of discoveries and we can also give because it's specific to biodynamics and that we really want to help uh, to give more forces to regenerate uh, the plants and the soil the plants and the animal because they are not in the in such a healthy situation today Uh, it's one one aspect and very uh, second aspect is because uh, I find that this movement is very interesting one challenging one but there are very enthusiastic people very interesting people very uh, strong engaged people and people who uh, not uh, only speak but do do a lot transform and do uh, very interesting initiatives so I, I like it to be part of this movement and uh, Yeah, maybe a third. I, uh, uh, it's uh, because it's for me also a possibility to. I'm also a trainer mostly, so to say, and I uh, like so much <laughs> to say uh, nature, and then it's really uh, for me very important to give this uh, love for nature I have to tr to try to give it to other people, to younger people, and so on to try to, to, to give it further because I, it 
brought me so much so i think it could help other people this connection with to 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 have this connection with nature yeah. wow okay and it's it's uh, really nice to hear the motives of the of the people that are joining this podcast it's so interesting and um thank you very very much for sharing that and um Yeah, it was a pleasure having you here. I think it was it will not be the last time <laughs> that I will talk with you on one or the other topic of the biodynamic agriculture. And um, yes, I will put all of the um, presentations and, and links we just discussed about in the show notes. And um, for our listeners, I'm very much looking forward to having you around the next time. So thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you.